Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to New Brick Workshop. I've been to the auction again. I've bought a couple of bits of furniture which I'm going to try and do up. The first is a coffee table which you see behind me. Now, uh, this is in pretty reasonable condition. It's very modern, uh, but it's got a few scratches on the top and the top has been uh, finished with uh, one of these two-part acrylic finishes which is very, very hard. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge trying to get those scratches out. And over here, I've got an old Pembroke table. And this is an unusual one in that it's got a single pedestal in the middle. And uh, I've actually really only bought this for the mahogany itself, which does look quite good. So uh, that may be a separate video. I'm going to tackle the coffee table first. Now, although this is modern, I quite like the uh, design. It's got a, a top which doesn't have sharp corners to it, which is... Uh, quite nice when you've got visiting children you don't want them to uh, bash themselves on that. Uh, there's a little bit of detail with a, a bit of inlay around here so it makes it a bit more interesting. And the way the uh, legs are done is also quite, quite pleasing. Now the only thing I really don't like about it is that it's got casters on the feet. I'll turn this over and show you. I think you can probably see fairly clearly these uh, sort of decorative feet but they've got these casters on and if you've got a carpet in your drawing room or whatever uh, then the last thing you really want are these very old-fashioned very thin casters uh, which will mark the carpet and uh, I don't think they're a very good idea for a coffee table someone knocks into it everything goes sideways perhaps so what I've done is I started to take these off and the caster was originally sitting on there and it had then a washer on top like so and then there was a rivet uh, that was bashed down which was peened over so what I did was I filed off the rivet so it was flat which allowed this to come off then there was a, a central bit which was like the the axle I suppose you'd call it so I then sold that off so I'm now left with this well what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pads on here uh, and this bit that sticks up here will be uh, in a recess in the solid mahogany pad. Just to be on the safe side, in case these uh, are made to fit, I'm numbering them. I've scratched the number one there, I've written a number one there. So I know this one's got to go back in that position. I'm now going to take all the others off and get them to this stage. Uh. These don't want to come off very easily, so I'm just going to give them a little bit of encouragement. There it is. So that one's off. I can now take that to the little metalwork vise and sort that out. And there, that, that bit's done. Now all I've got to do is cut this off so that I don't mark the actual brass foot. I've held that uh, swivel bit in there and I'm just going to saw through. There it goes. That's that. Now I didn't like that sharp bit so I'm just going to file that. So it's not such a hazard. That should do. So that's two done now, just two more to go. Now I still want the coffee table to be able to move around and we don't want to have those casters as I've said already. So I've made up these runners, they fit underneath where the casters have been and the whole of this surface will slide across the carpet making it easy to move but it won't mark the carpet. I'm just going to round over these edges, I've got a rounding over cutter in here. I don't know whether you're able to see, that's, uh, that's perfect, it's just rounded over nicely and I'll give that a little sand, I'm going to stain it and I'm then going to put some Osmo on it. And of course I'm making two of these, one for each side. These get screwed in from underneath, they'll be covered in Osmo eventually and these spread the load uh, of the table across a piece of carpet and it makes it easier to move it, you just slide the piece of furniture. And I'll show you some examples of things I've used this technique with before. A dining room chair, a dining room table 
and also a sofa table, which we've had for many years. So that's the idea, and uh, so I'm happy with that. Uh, these will get Osmo eventually, but not yet. I'm now going to take the top off and see what I can do with that. Well, these leg arrangements seem to come off okay. I'm just going to make sure they go back in the same place. This is number three, that's number four. And that continues my numbering from when I was doing these feet. So that's that done. I can now put these to one side and start work on the top. If you've not seen me use one of these before, this is a, a Festool sanding sponge and uh, the only ones I've got are in granite 120 uh, and I find it perfectly okay for almost everything I do. So I've never bothered to get any finer ones or coarser ones for that matter. And incidentally this uh, sander is the Festool ETS EC 150 Oblique 3. I use this more than any other sander. Um, oh, a tremendous amount of time. Uh, I reckon 95% of my sanding is done with this sander. If you put really coarse grit on here, it will be quite aggressive if you want it to be. But uh, I've got uh, 240 grit on now, uh, and it's making a lovely job. Now this has come up pretty light, so I will, uh, in a few moments, take this outside into a sheltered area, but where there's plenty of fresh air blowing by and I'm going to put on some of this Liberon uh, spirit-based Georgian mahogany wood dye. And that should really bring it up to a rather nice colour. And you may have noticed that I've, I've put a little bit of filler in three little places where there were dings. Um, they're very, very minor. I almost decided to leave them as a bit of character, but uh, a little bit of the Osmo filler. And <laughs> believe it or not, I've used cherry as the flavour here to try and make it just a little closer to the way that this wood has gone. Uh, but when I put the, the die on that will uh, alter everything anyway. Now the screw holes which are on the underneath, I'm just going to fill them. It'll make the screws bind a little better because I noticed they weren't particularly tight when I took them out. I'm, I'm using matchsticks, I'm dipping them in a bit of PVA glue. As you can see I'm just tapping them into the hole and when the glue's gone off I'll just get them flush uh, with a chisel. And what I'm doing is I'm just tapping this in. Interesting the angle some of these go in at. I'm using the same technique on the holes which are in the feet. I've put just one coat on the underside of this of the PolyX uh, 3011. It's the clear gloss and it's what I use almost all the time. And that's come out fine. Uh, there's no need to put a second coat on this because it is the underside and I was very careful putting this on. Now these screw holes I'd actually filled with the uh, bits of matchstick. I do need to make sure I find these holes so I'm just going to put a, a little indent into them to make it easier to locate the screws in the same places. I'm just using a braddle it's quite clear where the screw holes were. Now the other side has not had any Osmo yet. I thought it would be easier to put these legs on now uh, and then turn it over and it's going to be easier to handle. And you remember I've been numbering everything. This is three, this is four, and that's uh, two and that's one. Uh, and I know where these came from because this is numbered under here. So I'm now going to get this sorted out. I'm using new screws this time because I thought the old ones were a little bit rusty. Now if one takes care one can actually feel whether it's in the right place just by the way it feels that it wants to start going in the hole and after a while <laughs> you'll be able to do uh, and it's actually quite easy really. That's it, that's fine. I know it's going in the right place there. I'm taking care not to overdo these. Uh, I've also taken enormous care to make sure these sc new screws are of the right length. That's fine. That's absolutely 
solid as a rock, and that's better than it was uh, when I picked it up from the auction. And I'll do the same here. Now I was just getting ready to put the Osmo on, and I've noticed just in this area here, because of the way the light is shining, that I've got some swirl marks. And I'm, that's not really acceptable, because it will show once everything is finished. Sometimes this is very difficult to see, and the only time you actually will see it is when the Osmo or whatever finish has gone on, and then you're a bit late. So I've got to sand this a bit more. Just to make you aware, the swirl marks are caused by the sanding process, sanding with a machine. And what happens is, as the random orbit sander goes round, it if it's got uh, uneven sort of layers of grit on it, uh, some of those bits of grit will make a deeper gouge than others. And it's particularly noticeable with coarse uh, grits. And I started, when I had all that awful acrylic varnish on here, I started at 80 grit. And then I went to 120 and so on. And that's the thing to do, is to slowly work your way through the grits until you get to the, the finished one and minus 240. Uh, when what I must have done was to uh, just not uh, concentrate on that particular area there enough uh, when I was working through the grits. But I've looked everywhere else and as far as I can see there's no other places where I've got swirl marks. Uh, maybe in my case I could have started at 120 and just used more of the sheets uh, as they got clogged up. But anyway, uh, that's now been fixed. I've now got to redo the stain. So uh, having uh, just sanded that I'm now going to make up a pad and I'm going to use this to put uh, some of this Liberon uh, Georgian mahogany spirit based wood dye and that's what I used originally but I just need to go over it once more very lightly because I've sanded it and I've made up a pad doesn't need to be very big and I'm going to now apply some of this. Now I'm in a, a well ventilated outhouse at the moment, the doors are open and so um, I would not advise using any spirit based stuff in a closed room. And what I'm doing is I'm applying a bit onto the pad and then moving it round I think this should uh, should do it of course now I've got to leave this for at least 24 hours let that absolutely go off now I found if I'm doing a number of Osmo sessions over perhaps 48 hours or so uh, that I can wrap the brush up in some of this cling film. I call it snappy wrappy by the way. And that will keep the brush uh, nice and soft and pliable so that you don't need to actually clean the brush every single time. Anyway, my stain has gone off so I can now get the polyx uh, on. I'm giving it a stir before I start. Very important to do that every time. And what I do with my stirring stick is once I've used it get the brush and take as much off as possible so you don't waste any of it because actually it's quite expensive but it's worth every penny. I'm now going to apply my Osmo. There are a number of different ways you can apply Osmo and I've tried them all and some work better than others. What I tend to do is to put a generous coat on with a brush and then one of my non-abrasive scouring pads, those are the white ones, I use that to really uh, sort of to really get that Osmo into the grain as it were and then wipe off any excess and you'll be amazed how quickly Osmo will dry using that technique but you do need to use more coats and I pretend it's a bit like and I see it as being a little bit like applying French polish. You use lots of terribly thin layers to create the final effect. Anyway, so this is the first part of the process. 
And I'm just giving a, an extra little coat to these uh, runners and uh, they'll be ready to go on in about 24 hours time. And I've stuck a screw in here so it can be hung up to dry. Well, there it is, it's finished. I've put these little sliders on the bottom so that it can be moved around uh, without any problems at all, very easily. And it doesn't leave a uh, sort of history mark on the carpet. So I've put three coats of Osmo, that's the 3011 uh, clear gloss uh, on there. And I left 24 hours in between each coat. And I'm really pleased with that. It's really come up really nicely. And for £25 in the auction, I think that's not bad. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.